Jeffrey, I've been trying to understand the nature of breakthroughs in science, and I've been talking to scientists, well-known scientists, who have developed uh, string theory, new ways of thinking in, about neurobiology, and each of them have a reductive kind of way of thinking which enables them to make progress and be mm -hmm. real science. You've had a been involved in a different way of thinking with complex adaptive systems and what that means to understand the way the, the physical world, biological world, and indeed the social world works. Uh, how do complex adaptive systems work and why is that a breakthrough in scientific thinking? Hmm. Yes, I think this is a very important question, especially for the 21st century. Um, you know, I spent most of my career doing high energy physics, the early part of my career, 30 odd years of doing quarks and gluons and, and string theory and dark matter and Higgs particles and all the rest of this marvelous stuff. Uh, but very much in the kind of Newtonian reductionistic tradition, which has been enormously successful and enormously powerful. Um, and built into that was almost unsaid, uh, sometimes it was even said, that you know, all we need to understand are these fundamental laws, and from that we can build up and understand all the collective phenomena um, on the planet, in the universe, so that we could understand so this sort of, <laughs> sort of ridiculous idea in a way that somehow all of biology, all of ecology, all of social science somehow will be derivative from the fundamental equations of physics. And culminating, of course, that idea culminating in the very phrase, a theory of everything. Um, and I think that's uh, what was, I think, realized uh, towards the latter part of the 20th century um, uh, by a small group of very distinguished scientists, um, who, some who came out of fundamental physics, that this was a misconception, that in fact, um, in the, in the world of biology and social science, the messy world existing on this planet, um, it has its own laws. And it's mostly embodied, I think, really in the conceptual framework of uh, uh, the theory of evolution and natural selection as, as manifested by uh, Darwin. And, um, and I think that sets the stage for a whole new way of doing science uh, namely, to realize that there are these systems which um, are historically contingent and um, are evolving and they're continually adapting. They're made of enormous numbers of components and they have emergent phenomena, new phenomena emerge. Uh, um, a city is not the sum of all the people that live in it. Uh, your body is not the sum of all its cells. Your brain is not the sum of all its neurons. There is an emergent phenomenon beyond that, and that has its own laws. Now, it is indeed an, um, a, a very worthy challenge to ask, can you derive those emergent laws from the underlying dynamics? But nevertheless, I think it's an important and crucial step um, to recognize that there is a science of these complex systems themselves. And, um, and, and one of the big challenges, I think, of the 21st century is to develop that science. And uh, one of the questions one could ask, is there a science of complexity analogous to um, the science of thermodynamics, which mm. was the science that grew out of um, uh, the, the Industrial Revolution, the focus on energy, on steam engines and the rest. Um, which seemed uh, very parochial at the time, but turns out that thermodynamics and the concept of entropy is the most fundamental law in the universe. But it came out of looking at these grungy steam engines and asking about how efficient they could be, et cetera. So maybe by thinking of these complex systems and asking similar fundamental questions, we can develop a generic theory of complexity that involves not just thermodynamics, but also ideas of information theory, because fundamental to these systems in terms of adaptation is the exchange of information. So, and these systems in general systems theory apply to the biological world, the social world, 
uh, the world of technological innovation, absolutely. all different kinds of expressions. So that, absolutely. So uh, so developing such a theory is there an umbrella theory? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. My own view is there probably isn't, frankly. Uh, by the way, a theory here meaning in the sense that it has principles, that it can be made quantitative, that can be mathematized and be computational. Um, so I, I'm not convinced that there could be, but I think it's, a, it's incredibly important that we work to try to see if there are. Nevertheless, we can still work at a lo slightly lower level and ask, are there general systematic behaviors that connect mm -hmm. all these things yeah, that they okay. do? And that's why I got so excited about scaling and power laws and the underlying network theory from which they are derived. Mm. Because what is remarkable is that despite the fact that these are evolving adaptive systems, they still obey quantitative mm. laws. They still have regularities. And these regularities are a reflection of the mathematical framework of networks and the principles are guiding those networks. And, and I think one of the big challenges is actually to recognize that these laws, these scaling laws, are not like Newton's laws in the sense that Newton's laws um, and the whole idea of theory of everything is sort of that, yes, in principle, I can calculate anything to any degree of accuracy. And that's the world of physics. And in a way, that's only true of simple systems like the planets or your iPhone or whatever. The world of complexity, I don't think there are laws with that kind of precision, but there are laws and they can be mathematized and computational and they can be predictive, but they're statistical in nature. Now we, we have variants, we have variations around these laws and, and the challenge is not only to understand those laws, but understand the origin of the variation, the, the probabilistic nature of these laws.